chat what's up the youtube viewership what's up man if you're in the youtube right now please hit the like button please comment on what your favorite section of this episode was this is the needed podcast episode 19 this is the 19th week we've been doing this I appreciate all the support you guys have given me. I'm a little bit under the weather. I had a man tournament this weekend. Who run Philly? My man Jimmy threw a great tournament. Gave away over $1,000 in prizes. And uh, I was in this little room all day with man players. So, naturally, I got a little bit sick. That always happens to you. So, it's definitely uh, something you got to worry about, man. I really might switch just to the fist pound instead of the handshake from now on. But almost over my cold, I feel like I'm about 90%. Uh, it is Tuesday. And it was a crazy week in the man world. It really was. It, it was obviously something we've been waiting for. It was just competitive men. It was the end of the um, the man challenge. And the tournament, the single elimination, there was, I believe, four rounds of single, or three rounds of single, single elimination until you got to groups. Then we got to groups. Then three people made it out of there. Some people had other single elimination games. Some people made it straight to the live event. Um... The biggest takeaway we get from all the um, all the online tournament was just that, just the putrid display of effectiveness that the EA online servers gave us. Um, just I mean, as a man that streamed and broadcasted and commentated, probably about I mean ninety percent of the games that were streamed, not a lot of them were streamed, and that's understandable. That's like a whole other topic that we've gone over a million times on this podcast and so on and so forth, but. The biggest thing was just the just the rate at which the games desynced. There was a new glitch that came into the game. There was a freeze at two minute warnings. So some of the biggest games coming down to the wire, most I mean most memorable was the Saya and Rage game, but a two minute warning in the fourth quarter and a seven point game froze. That was wild, and, and you know what happened to a lot of games. Obviously, we all watched Problem go through it too. Two different desyncs. I played in a Mudhead tournament that had three desyncs within 20 minutes where the game just drops. Obviously, in an online ladder game, it doesn't matter that much because you can just quit, start another game, so on and so forth. But in a tournament, you have to sit through and, you know, go back to that point. There's no situational mode where you can just program that point into the game. And that's something that really hampered the online experience for everybody today or this weekend, man. And the biggest thing to me is that you know, in life, everything, you know, obviously EA can't fix this problem. You know, they, they all know it's a problem. They know that it's happened. They know that um, the desyncs are there. They know um, that they're happening rapidly. Now, it wasn't just every once in a while. I remember talking to Chow in, in Vegas for the Man, Cha- Man Classic, and uh, one thing he said, like, well, what percent of the games, you probably say 2% of the games desynced? No. After watching the tournament this weekend, I mean, I would say probably at least 60-70% of the games that I watched and I broadcasted and I commentated, 60-70% to 70% of the games desynced in which players had to go ahead and restart, lose all the momentum that they had, lose all the thought process that they had, and just have to restart a game. And all the adrenaline that you have, all the adrenaline that your opponent has, whatever it may be, if you're up, if you got momentum, if you're feeling good, if you're feeling bad, whatever it may be, you have to restart the whole thing. And it's really detrimental to tournament play, man. And and the biggest thing, like I said, EA knows this is happening. Obviously, they have no answer for it. They can't fix it. Nor, I mean, I don't think they don't care. That's some of the things that say they don't care. Because obviously, this looks really bad. And it's, it happened on a live stage a couple times. I want to say two or three times. But it was really bad for the, uh, whatchamacallit? really bad for the online play to online tournaments. And obviously they can't fix it. I don't think they want it to go on. And I would think they wish they could fix it, but they can't. I mean, obviously it's been going on all year. They implement the tournament tab. Now all of a sudden we're freezing at a two-minute warning. Excuse me. Oh, man. Freezing at a two-minute warning. So not only do we have to do with, deal with these things, now we're freezing at a two-minute warning. So you can get through a whole game without these things, bang, freeze at a two-minute warning. Got to restart the game anyway. Okay, so from where I'm at, as a consumer, and that not only as a consumer, and we all are at, are people that invest their lives into this, invest their time and their energy and their money into this, into the product that they are giving us, into pretty much, you know, their whole MCS, their whole field, everything that they're giving us, we're investing everything that we have into this. 
And for it to be this bad and for that to be such a terrible experience for everybody that participated in the tournament and everybody that watched the tournament, for it to be that bad, I wanted some type of apology from somebody. I don't care if it was a janitor that works at EA. I would like somebody to say, you know what, this is not a standard that we accept and we apologize. Because for me, I I understand, I'm old enough to understand that not everything's going to be perfect, man. No matter what you're doing, whether you're doing a picnic, whether you're doing a softball game, whether you're putting fireworks up, whatever it may be, it's not going to be perfect. Things are going to go bad, and maybe you might not have an answer for that. Maybe it's, you know what I mean, maybe it's something you can't deal with. But to accept it and stay quiet about it and not, you know, accept how bad it was and how awful an experience it was for people that continued to put their time and energy into it and how bad we what we had to go through, what we all had to go through, and to not apologize for that to me was very disappointing. Now, at the same on the flip side, if you look, if you're in Matt Marcoux's situation, because he is the leader, he is the commissioner. I believe that's, I mean, that's part of being a commissioner, is being a leader. So, essentially, if you're the leader of this and it's going bad, which it did, if you go ahead and admit, make make a statement like that, I'm sorry for how bad it was. I'm sorry that you guys had to sit through this. If that's your statement, that's kind of admitting that you did a shitty job. Now, anybody in his situation who's already probably on a hot seat might not want to go ahead and admit that you're doing a shitty job. But at some point, as a man, I think taking accountability and apologizing for for what happened this weekend and what everybody playing the game had to go through is a pretty big deal. And for me personally, that it means a lot that for someone to accept it, somebody at EA. I mean, there's so many people, and for nobody to say anything about it and just think it was okay for everybody to sit through these desyncs sit through these freezes and sit through the quality of online experience that we dealt with and for them to not say a single goddamn thing was very disappointing pretty much and that that's pretty much what I took in from the whole weekend from EA standpoint that I really wish they would have just um you know just came out and just said something you know just acknowledge that it's unacceptable you know and uh, and they do it obviously the tournaments are great for all of us man players we really appreciate them put on these tournaments but at some point at some point you have to have some type, sort of standard for what you're doing I mean esports is bigger than life right now and what we had to deal with was not acceptable from any standard and somebody needs to I just wish they would have came out with some type of an apology acknowledge what happened you know because it was bad and anybody that watched it and playing it would probably agree with me and I think some sort of an apology and acknowledgement would go a long way especially for me because I am that type of person. And maybe it might not work for everybody. Maybe it'll just get killed on the apology letter. Or maybe it'll just make fun of the apology. Whatever it may be. But for me personally, I would love some type of, you know, acknowledgement and, you know, accountability from EA. Which they gave nothing. You know, they did not acknowledge the fact that the game was shitty all weekend. And so we just had to live with them. It affected people's games. More often than not, it really affected problems games. But we'll talk about problems game going here in, in the. I mean, we'll talk about problems game going forward here. But first of all, after through all the desyncs, all the two minute freezes, all of the stuff we went through, we did come up with sixteen players, sixteen players that made it to California, sixteen players that are going to go ahead and compete for another belt. I don't know how much money this one is total. Um, chat, how much money are we competing for? I believe it's like one something. I want to say one eighty maybe total. I don't know. It's not. The last tournament was seven hundred thousand. You know, so out of a million, when you take that seven hundred thousand chunk away, it's not that much. So, one hundred ninety k is what the chat is telling me. So, we'll see. But I want to show you guys. This is the eight people that we came across. This is the groups that they're going to be in for the Man Challenge, and I'm really excited about it because it looks fairly even. I like the way the groups are stacked out. No real killer group. Every group is kind of kind of even. I want you guys to check this out. Uh, you bring this up for me, uh, Griffin. We could take a look at the groups for the Man Challenge 2019, I believe this would be. And uh, where are we at? I guess you guys can see that fairly well. We could probably... Zooming up a little bit. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Okay. So this is the first group. We got Pavin, 
who defeated Clef to get here. I'm, we're not going to talk about, I mean, what happened in essence. We are going to talk about that, but not right now. That's going to be later in the podcast. So stay tuned. We'll talk about penalties, accepting, declining, and when you should and should not accept. But Pavin, obviously we had him on the podcast about two, two three podcasts ago. D-Man, Club Series champion, made California again. Great performance by him. Obviously probably a top five player, top one player right now is Pavin. He is right here. Then we have Beast Mode Mac. Uh, Madden 17, Madden Challenge champion. Obviously, you guys should know Beast Mode Mac. Be somewhat familiar with Beast Mode. Then we got Crit. Crit, I mean, he's been in Twitch Chats for a long time. This is his first live event. This is his first opportunity to be on the live event stage. We'll see what he has. And then we got Saya Joe, the same thing. Anybody that's played money games, played MWS, played Players Lounge, Gamers Lounge, whatever, you know Saya Joe if you played. The leaderboards, I got juice, you got to know Sai, and, and this is his first live event as well. So you have two new new booties in there with, with two ch- two belt winners. That's a pretty, I mean, if you're going to put two new booties, put them with two belt winners, two guys with a lot of experience. I mean, I wouldn't, I can't even think. Obviously, Beast Mode won the Man Classic, or the Man Challenge in Man 17. That automatically put him into the Man cl- Championship at the end of the year. I'm trying to think if Beast Mode made any other live event since then. Like, it was just the Madden Challenge that year that he won. And then the Madden Championship, obviously. I don't know if he made it out of groups. I don't really don't remember. But, uh, and Pavin, this is his first year really competing. So, although these guys have experience, they have belts, they're not the most experienced belt winners. They're not, you know, Skimbo Kiv, so on and so forth. But they definitely have experience and both have belts against two guys that we have not seen on a live event stage. So that would be this. I mean, obviously, if you want to ask me if I were going to pick who wouldn't make it out, it's going to be between, I mean, the crit versus side game. I'm not sure. I never really played crit, and uh, I don't know what he has or what's going on. Draft Champion is really funny, man. You might give crit his number one book and give these other guys shitty books, and, you know, why he have a, might have a little advantage. But for me, it's either Sia or crit, whichever one of those struggle. Whoever wins their game, I think, will get out of there. Whoever loses their game might see the road but we'll see it's going to be interesting man draft champions is pretty much anybody's ball game and everybody's gonna be pretty even but the one playbook unbalanced will be a big deal but i would pick uh the loser of Sai and crit to be the one to not make it out of this group then we go into the next group we got kane man we got js the best last year's ravens club series champion we got Spoto, the young, angry guy that's mad at the game all the time and we got bugs the 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 air eating Plant drinking old guy books, as I referred to books the other night, the most boring man in the history of the world. But that's my guy, and he's back at a live event. Probably has the most experience of anybody on this list. Keynes has a little bit, obviously, experience. He's done a lot, especially in club. He's back to back Bears Club Series champion, was in Madden Bowl 17, was in the Madden Championship that year as well. So Keynes has experience. Boogs, old man Boogs. Is back playing Spoto, who probably once again looks like an eight-year-old, and then JS the best, the Ravens Club Series champion last year. So this is definitely a decent little group. I would, man, I think Keynes is playing good right now. I don't think he he lost it all in the online play. I think he's got a chance if he's got a good book, he's got a chance to make a run. Obviously, Bugs for me, my favorite, the person I'm rooting for. So anything I say with Bugs is going to be biased. Um. But I think uh, I think JS the best is the one that does not make it out of here. I think Canes and Bugs are pretty good. I think Spoto's good, and I don't know about JS the best. We'll see what he does, what he can do, but I would pick him to be the one not to make it out. Next group, Journey vs. Ghost. Again, I'm tired of watching Journey vs. Ghost. VY Electrified, Skimbo Slayer. And then we got Wesley Joe Rice down here. This is a, I mean, this is a good little group, man. You got... Bunch man goes, bunch man Joe Rice, Drenny, and then VY, who who I mean is gonna run the ball, gonna play good defense, really solid player. That I mean, obviously this is his, I believe he won the Giants last year. But this is uh, for me, clubs is a little weird because I feel like clubs is kind of easy. Now I don't want to say easy to win, but it's like it's a little easier to make one of these. If you guys get what I'm saying, I feel like making one of these final 16s or final eights is a big deal. And obviously, Joe Rice has done it. Ghost obviously has a belt. Journey has a belt. So, VY would probably super be the underdog in this situation. And I would expect him to make not make it out. But then again, 
Joe Rice did get blown smooth out twice and still make it. So Joe Rice lost by 40 in two different games and still made it here somehow. So God bless him. So, like I said, if VY can beat Joe Rice, I think VY might make it out and vice versa because – I think Ghost and Jenny are elite man players. I really do. I think I think they'll handle these other two guys fairly easily. Move down to the last group. Another great group. I think these groups are really balanced. I think there's no like group that we sit back and say, oh, that group's amazing. And there's no group we sit back and say, oh, that, I wish I was in that group. I think they're all pretty balanced, man. I think they did a good job. We got Kerry Q. Of all the people in the man community, I've probably gone out with Kerry Q the most as far as going to the club and to the bars and being on the women. He did fall in love in Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and, and he lost that girl. So I hope Kerry Q found that girl that he lo- fell in love with, and then she ran away. He didn't get her number. He was looking on social media. He gave some shout-outs. Do you remember? some? And he tried to describe her to people. And I hope he found that girl. And he got to tell the girl that I made the final 16 for the Man Challenge, so come check me out. So Kerry Q, Kerry Deuce is, is alive, and, and honestly – if if Kerry's going to make a, make a run, it's definitely going to be draft champions. So you get get a good deuce book, get a fast receiver, a good running back. I think he's definitely going to be a problem for anybody to deal with. And then another thing, you have Crush and Kiv, two guys that play a lot together, two guys that lab or what, whatever it may be. And it's interesting because, and then you have Prodigy, Noble Prodigy. Shout out to Prodigy for making another event, another decent player. So this is a pretty even, obviously you have Kiv who's elite. And the rest is pretty even. It's a pretty even field. Another even group. But this is interesting to me, crushing Kiv, is because... Now, I don't know if they think about this. Kiv is probably a nerd. He probably thinks about this. But me and Skimbo, the Madden Classic, last year, we were in the same group. He didn't talk to me at all. He didn't want to play me. He didn't want to help me get ready to play to other people. He didn't do shit. He just, like, we just... People thought, like, we... no. No, like, because this was Skimbo's thought process. And I'll tell you guys this. is He was thinking, like, okay, if me and W are going to do the same thing against Kerry, right? So if Crush and Kiv lab all day to stop Kerry, right? So so Kerry plays Crush first, right? Let's say that. And what Crush does, and Crush sees the defense that they labbed up. What Skimbo thought was, because if I, what Skimbo was like, if if I give my opponent a chance to see my defense, like if I give W my defense and he plays that opponent, by the time that opponent is ready to play me, he'll be that much more prepared for the defense or he'll be that much more ready to play me. So essentially I'm wondering if Kiv and Crush are working together or they're like chilling and they're not really, you know, locking in on this because this is interesting to me that, you know, is because Skimbo wouldn't help me. Like he wouldn't help me get – we had to play True Boy, rest in peace, and we had to play um, Stevie J. Skimbo, we didn't go over it. Like, we didn't talk or do anything like that at all. Like, nothing. And essentially it was uh, because he was afraid that if I ran a certain defense against Stevie J, by the time he played Stevie J, that Stevie J would adjust to it and be able to beat it. So he wanted to do his own thing and let me figure it out on my own. So I don't know if Crush and Kiv have put any thought into that. Are they going to lab up and try to get out of here and try to, you know <laughs> – beat Carrie and Prodigy, or are they just going to be on their own? Interesting thought process. I don't know. Like I said, if I look at this, I think between Crush and Prodigy is the one that's not going to make it out. I think Carrie's going to be really tough and in deuce in draft champions. But we'll see how they go approach it. It's something I'll be looking at. Does Crush and Kiv run the same exact defense against Carrie? Do they have something different? Are they on their own, or are they together? What is their thought process? Because, like I said, Skimbo would not help me at all. You know, I think a lot of that was Skimbo. To this day, Skimbo's afraid of me because he knows on that big stage, I will put hands and feet on him. So any advantage he gives me will stop him from winning. The, that, that's pretty much how it is. I think that's all it is. And I think Kiv kind of has mind control over the rest of his crew. Like I don't think anybody in Kiv's little crew will ever beat him. Other than, I, I think Mo, because I think nobody has mind control over Mo. I think Mo can you know Mo mentally is tough enough to be anybody but these other guys I don't know about Crush and Jeff and I know Wesley has no chance of beating Kiv but I don't know about Crush and Jeff and him. I don't know if they have the ability to beat their leader because like that's how I feel about EMB I feel like Ghost could be a million times better than Joke but Joke will always beat Ghost because Joke is just a leader and, and Ghost is just a pawn but anyway but anyway that's the groups that was the uh just my brief going on, my brief synopsis of the groups, man. That's definitely 
a tough thing to uh, see you guys and everything. It's definitely uh, good groups to look at. Good games coming up. I believe it is the, um, I believe this is the March. I want to say March 14th, 15th, something like that. The middle of March, this will go down. A little bit extended from um, before, I want to say two weeks from now or three weeks from now. Before, I believe it was like the next weekend or it was like two weeks was the was the longest, man. You know, that's pretty much, I think two weeks was like once you made the event, bang, you scheduled, you flew out, you played that weekend. So this is a little bit of time. I believe these guys will go ahead and play uh, a lot more draft champions. I saw Wesley playing earlier today, playing salary cap. I think there's something to be said about staying playing Madden, staying playing good people, as opposed to just wanting to play uh, the same mode. I think it's okay to play different modes, but the last week I would just focus on one mode, you know, that, that same type of speed, those same type of players, you know, them same type of draft. Especially the biggest difference for me is probably the route specialist. You know, there's nothing in draft champions like that. You know, and I see a lot of these kids playing and using that a lot especially with their bunch, and um, it's definitely the biggest difference to me in between the two different modes, but I'm pretty sure those guys will lock in and it'll be pretty good, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Like I said, I mean, I'm ready for Bugs to win a belt, and I will tell you right now, chat, if Bugs wins a belt, I will eat nothing but salads for two months straight, two months straight, so my birthday is May 11th. I will eat nothing but salads, a salad for breakfast, a salad for lunch. I will drink air. I will drink water out of a mason jar with lemons in it. I will do all that if Bugs wins the belt. I promise you that. And I will be 170 pounds, and you guys won't recognize me. But we'll see. I mark my words if Bugs wins the belt. When Bugs wins the belt, I mean, I fully, honestly, because I will tell you this, as a man that's played the hell out of Bugs for, for three years, this is probably the best Bugs has been playing at least since before the Man Bowl that I won. Like, Bugs is playing really good football right now. So, hopefully he gets a decent draft and a decent team. And we'll see how it goes. Um, But, on to the bigger news in the week. The bigger drama, so to say. The bigger uh, topics that all you guys want to talk about. Because everybody wants to talk about these topics. This is why they show up. This is why they watch. I mean, obviously, we can talk about the groups and talk about the games. But let's talk about the topics. I mean, the first one I got on my list is the Beast Mode of Cyrus. And this is directly related to Problems Game. We've all watched Problems Game. We all watched it. The two desyncs. The desync on fourth and eight from his own, from his, from problems forty, whatever it may be, out of field goal range. We all watch that pretty much, and uh, after the game, so on, so, on, so problem kind of went through all these desyncs. The kid didn't know how to get back to the right spot. Then, then he had to restart the game again, so on and so forth. The game took three hours, and obviously we all root for problem because one. He, I mean, he kind of friends with everybody, but he's also, like, the biggest streamer, so he has a great following. So you always want to see, for me personally, you always want to see people that stream and put man as their career. You want to see them do good, you know. So I'm going to, especially against a creep name, like, I, I will, listen, I will always root for the real name over the creep name every day of the week. I don't care what it is. But anyway, so they play. Problem gets a little bit cheated in the game. Uh... The, the opponent, we're just going to call him the opponent, caught two high balls like playmakers. Just just some, not, I don't want to say super fluky catches, but just some catches. It's like, come on, man. So I, I felt like Prime was playing good defense. He was playing good. Then he had that overthrow, if you guys remember. I'm sorry, I don't really have highlights for it, but it's not that it's not the point of the, the uh, topic. He had that overthrow pick, and it was just like, damn. He went through all that desync and all that restart and then kind of get a little bit cheated. So the game is over. Bang. The game is over. So now we find out that this King Duck character was essentially Cyrus. Now all you guys know Cyrus. He's uh, been in the man community forever. Good guy, I guess. I don't know nothing bad about him. I've always had pleasant talks with him and everything. So I have no problem with him. You know what I'm saying? Beast Mode, same thing. Been in the man community forever. Bang, bang, bang. Been in EMB, whatever. I never had any problems with Beast Mode. Been a pretty decent kid to me. I have no problem. You know what I'm saying? So boom. Now, these two guys live together, okay? So what Problem was alluding to in a couple of his messages after the game was that maybe Beast Mode, who I would assume, nah, 
I, me personally, I don't know how good Cyrus is at the game. I don't know how good Beast Mode is at the game. I never thought Beast Mode was some super elite player like Kiv, Skimbo, Ghost, or the Joker, somebody like that. Beast Mode's been a pretty decent player, but we can all agree he's not a super elite player. You know, and Cyrus might be just an average player, whatever it may be. But anyway, Prime was alluding to the fact that maybe Beast Mode plays the game for Cyrus because they live together. Now, this has always been a problem in Madden that people assume it's going to happen. And the most recent example was the early Mudhead tournament when Kiv played all the games for Serious Mo and EMB accused them of that. Where and So that was the first example of that was when Kiv was playing for Serious Mo early in the year this year. But in all seriousness, um, you never really know who you're playing in an online tournament. But for me, as far as I'm concerned, I've always felt like I should pretty much be able to beat anybody, you know, and I really don't know who I'm playing on the other end. Like I said, I be, I uh, played a lot of EMB members in these online eliminations. I really did, and um, you always assume when you're playing a franchise, Evil Low, Lil Man, whatever it may be, it could be Joke, because Joke lived down the street from all these guys, and it's like he could just show up at their crib and play the game. And it's something they've always accused EMB for, and, and EMB always accuses other people of this, but... Ultimately, I think it's just a part of online Madden that we kind of got to expect, we kind of got to, you know, anticipate it and expect it. You know, it's really not a big deal because I feel like everybody kind of has the opportunity to do it. Me, myself, I've never been, a. I would never let anybody play. I would rather lose than play than let somebody else play for me because I feel like as a man, it's like, for me, it's like for me to say I'm not good enough to win, can you come please play my game? What? Like what? I just I would I on my mother I'd rather lose than admitting that ever in my life. I would rather lose, but so for me that's never been an option. Um I would I I mean I, there was other notions of people having multiple uh multiple gamer tags in the tournament and that's something I mean I fully expect everybody to do. You know, if you have some, some friend down the street that wants to play Madden, you know, you want to go grind some games getting the leaderboard, I would 1,000% do that. And I would 1,000% ask, 1,000% ask, you know, or 1,000% assume that multiple people did that in Madden, you know, this year in the D.C. tournament. Because all you got to do is qualify in the top 96. You can go over to your buddy house, play, play 50 games and qualify or whatever it may be qualified and you got two chances now obviously if you win for your buddy and he makes it in he has to go and he's not going to win shit when he gets there you know but at least y'all won that five thousand dollars you know so it's definitely something i i mean i i fully expect people to do i don't think anybody actually won and got in there so yeah i'm looking at the chat a little bit i've kind of been and, and youtube you guys can help me i've kind of been debating whether or not i look at the chat during the podcast or not you know, because I don't want people to, the YouTube viewership, to go back and look and be like, damn, I mean, who's he talking to? If I talk to anybody, I'm talking to the chat. But, so on and so forth. But like I said, people playing games for people has been around since online man has started. Especially, I won't even tell you how many times NFL players will get somebody, hit, hit up a, and you'll be surprised how much this happens. NFL players will hit up a professional man player and say, yo, I got to gamble against my guy for 5000 Can you sign on my name and play? Stuff like that happens all the time. It's all part of online gaming. You know, you never really know who you're playing on the other end. All you know is the gamer tag. And that's something, I, as man players, I think we've all accepted. And really, it's not something to really talk about, really, honestly, until... And the one talk is about can we make streaming mandatory. It's tough to make streaming a mandatory thing for people because ultimately it's like why... It's tough because the streaming equipment, I mean, that me, problem, or people with computer, computer is at least $1,000. Things about webcams, mics, all this extra stuff is just like, now you're kind of expect. now you're kind of opening up the, mad, the, the, the tournament field to only like professional gamers. You know, you remove the whole thought process of somebody just playing for fun and making a run in a tournament. And I think it's a little bit unfair that you, I mean, ultimately for somebody like me, I wouldn't care, obviously. But I think it's a little unfair for people that aren't, you know, set up, whether internet-wise or equipment-wise, to stream mandatorily. But it has been talked about in meetings. I've been to EA with competitive meetings. Do we want to, you know, make streaming something mandatory? 
but we'll see if that's ever a decision going down the line and uh you know, uh, we'll see if there's positives and negatives to making everything streamed mandatory. It would be cool for man. It definitely would be more exciting. This week would have been way better, especially this weekend. Group play games and the the the, the winning get in games would have been so much better because we saw chat. You guys tell me I, we saw Rage versus Saya desync, of course, and we saw Eagles Nations games. That's all we saw all weekend. That's it. You know. <clears throat> but anyway, so that's pretty much, like I said, people playing for people has been around Madden since online happened. It's something we accept. So I think complaining about it, I mean, what can you really do? There's really no answer for it. It's going to happen. Kiv plays for everybody in top Madden. Joke plays for everybody in EMB. Skimbo played for Bugs in the get into the tournament. You guys didn't know that, but it happened because... Bugs is so ass right now. He hit up Skimbo and said, can I play for you? I'm joking. Too many people take my shit too serious sometimes when I say jokes like that. Like, seriously. I'm Bugs played his games. Promise you. But anyway, that was that topic. Now let's get on to the the next topic, which is Pavin versus Clef, which stream, streaming in this could have helped this dilemma. Now this game, in my understanding comes down to kind of, I want to say etiquette. I think that's the rule we want to use. You know, etiquette is kind of the rule we want to throw out there. It's kind of the word we want to throw out there. What type of etiquette does a Madden player have to do? What is expected of a Madden player? What is expected? Because I feel like at some point we're all kind of friends. You know, I feel like everybody, you know, is kind of my friend, you know, and, and I wouldn't want to cheat anybody out of anything. But at the same time, I want to win. You know, when it comes down to what penalties are acceptable, what time in the game is a penalty acceptable, when can you accept the penalty, you know, because obviously we get to the point where all the um, delay games start the game, people, you know, people don't accept them. The only person to ever really accept them was Joke in the Man Ultimate League. But, you know, Joke's a different type of person, and we'll get to that in a couple seconds. But essentially, if you guys did not hear what happened between Pavin and Clef, Clef needed gaming representatives, so I was a little biased, and I'm going to be a little biased on this conversation. But what happened was it was it was late in the game. Clef was down points. He needed to get the ball back from Pavin. He was down like three, a minute left in the game. If Pavin gets one first down, the game is over. Clef holds him to three yards on first down. It's second and seven. And before, when Pavin comes out of the huddle, Go into the line of scrimmage. Before, like, the wide receivers even get set, I believe what happened was Clef clipped on the D, to, D end, hit the right trigger by accident. D end goes off sides, does the jump thing, jumps off sides, gets from second and seven to second and two. Bang. That's a huge play, a huge penalty to take because second and two is that much easier. Second and two is, you know, I mean, there's, yes, you're pretty much going to get a first down to end the game. So that penalty essentially kind of ended the game for Clef. Now, I don't know. Obviously, it was accident. He didn't want to do that. He wasn't on aggressive. He didn't fake hike. And uh, it was just, it was just something. It was something that, and this is what's crazy about it. It's something that if they were playing a $20 game, he would, I, I, I would, and it, all right, put it like this. If he was playing a $20 game, if he was playing 20, any time in the game, it would have happened. He probably would have declined it. If it was a $100 game, it happened in the first half, probably would have declined it. If it was a big moment in the game, and, and you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing, man. And we'll talk about this all the time because I feel like, and Clef told me that Pavin said if he was playing somebody else, he would have declined it. If he was playing Bazooka Larry, he would have declined it. But because he was playing another tough opponent on his same level and wanted that first down to get out, then Pavin accepted it. You know, and that's, I feel like you got to be the same. Yeah, accepting and declining got to be the same for every single person. You know, and honestly, for me, what I saw, I would have accepted that. But because it happened to my man Clef, I think it was scummy. But I want to give you guys two examples. I found two examples from Man Live Event of where people chose to accept or decline the penalty. You know, and we'll talk about this. We actually have Young Kiv is in the chat right now. Madden superstar, poster boy for Madden. 
although he hasn't done shit this year. For some reason, he's still the poster boy for Madden. But let's get to these two examples. The first one I want to show you is Young Kiv. Griff, you're going to bring these up for the people at home. This is Young Kiv against Kerry Q. Now, this is a little bit different because this is the first quarter of the game. You know what I'm saying? This is the first 30 seconds of the game. It's not even the first quarter. It is the first 30 seconds. Griff, can you bring this up? Yeah, there we go. So this is against Kerry Q. Bang. Young Kiv. This is, I want to say, Man 17 Madden Challenge. Now, this Kiv, Kerry boxed him so much, he has a fourth and four on his own 31. First play of the game. Now, you see, Kerry is just a weird old on defense. He's like pressing, not pressing. And if you remember this year, they had the little motion out glitch. He gets this guy off sides. Now, Kiv is running his play, you know, and bang, he throws this incomplete. You know what Kiv does? Uh, you know, I'm going to decline that. You know why? Because I didn't deserve that. That was a glitch in the game. And it, you see, he's thinking about it. But ultimately, he's going to decline that. You know what I'm saying? Because Kiv has the, you know, the the, the $4,000 Gucci jacket on. And he says, you know, I don't need that. He has the $4,000 Gucci jacket and the, the $40 in makeup on and the $400 haircut. So he declines the penalty. And ultimately, I will tell you this, chat. You see how much success Kiv has had since then because he's honestly an honorable person. But I'll also rewind this. If this happened at the end of the game, would Kiv decline this penalty? You know, and that's kind of where I'm at. Would you decline it? Would, you know what I'm saying? And Kerry here happy, you know what I'm saying? He got the ball. Kerry Q made another live event this time. We'll make a run. So that's an example of Kiv declining a penalty. Bang. Now I want to give you an example of the biggest scummy penalty in the history of the MCS era. This penalty happened against me. And this was Joke. A man that's outspoken about everything. And I will show you this play right here. Notice, chat, notice this. This is the Madden Classic. And I will tell you this. This game, I, I got cheated out my life in this game. I Listen, I should have won this game. And I should have won this belt. Because I would have beat the hell out of Skimbo. And he knows that too. But anyway, notice the time of the game. 120, he's he's near field goal range. I'm in a tough spot defensively, right? So what happens is it's first and 10. Joke is flipping the bunch, drinking the punch, uses some clock. So if he gets a first down, runs the draw. We And what he does right here, he no huddles. Hey, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to say he was no huddling just for this stupid shit. That he, and I get all sides. Now, me, myself, I couldn't do nothing about that. What the hell did I do? I could have put the controller down and did the same thing. Uh, he didn't earn that. I wasn't on aggressive. I didn't do anything, anything to warrant getting a penalty right here. Nothing. And this penalty essentially takes him from the 450-yard line in the field goal range to where he can just run the ball and get a field goal. And what does Joke do? Accepts it. Accepts it. Now, that is the worst possible penalty you can accept. Right there is the worst, because at least like Clef clicked on the guy, went off sides. That is the worst possible penalty you can accept. And Joke did it on the live stage at the live event, so I never he can never, ever in his entire life complain about anybody ever accepting a penalty. Now, I mean, I don't know what I would do, but I might accept. I don't know what I would do, but I think that Clef penalty, I accept it. Uh, but... <sighs> Ultimately, it's always tough not taking the free points or not taking the free, you know what I mean, the free yards. But anyway, those are my two examples of penalties that you can accept, decline, whatever it may be. I mean, ultimately, the choice is yours, but I think you have to stay consistent, man. If you would accept it in the first quarter, you pretty much got to accept it in the fourth quarter. If you would decline it in the first quarter, you got to decline it in the fourth quarter. It's kind of that that's how I feel about it. You kind of got to stay consistent. And ultimately, I mean, I, I think you can't really argue with somebody accepting penalties for them to win them the game. I mean, EA Sports is in the game, but essentially that's what Pavin did. It wasn't it wasn't as bad as the joke won, and it, it didn't win him the game. Where I don't think this joke penalty won him the game. I kind of just think, you know, it, I mean, obviously give you a huge advantage, and that one gave Pavin a huge advantage to get that first down. But ultimately, there's there's some type of etiquette. I don't know what the unwritten rules are. I really don't. But, uh, I mean, shoot. 
you got to decide whether you're going to go for it or not. And uh, Pavin obviously accepted his penalty. And well, like I said, people ask, what should I do when Joe accepted the penalty? Like, what are my options to do? You know what I mean? Like, what what should I do? You know, what do, I got to think about the next play because he was not – he, I mean, he was like fl- – Rags, he was kind of field goal range after he accepted that penalty. And it's like if I start complaining about it, you know, like what's going to happen? They're not going to stop the game. They're not going to give me my five yards back. Nothing like that is going to happen. So I pretty much had to focus on the next play because I figured if I could stop him, hold him for no yards, he can get the, he can stay at the 42 and kick a 59-yarder or something. I really had to make sure he didn't get any more yards. So if my thought process wasn't about the penalty, obviously the penalty sucked, but it was more about I got to keep playing this game is not over pretty much. You know, I didn't complain because to me it's like what like what are you really going to do? What is that going to solve complaining about it, man? You got to keep playing, you know, and honestly pretty much everybody – I'm, I mean, pretty much everybody's kind of different, and you know how you react to a situation like that, kind of determine how it's going to work. And I'll tell you what, because Clef, obviously he didn't like it, so it became a big deal because he thought the computer just did it; it was a computer thing, and so on and so forth. So maybe that affect how you play the next couple of days. And I know they took like a whole day off in between the games, so to me that was huge. I mean, it's hard to keep your moment. We talked about the D things, we talked about the freezes, man. It's hard to keep your momentum through all of that, man. It really is. Uh, hard to keep your momentum, and it's hard to keep that intensity going the whole time, really. But uh, that's what, that's that's the whole penalty thing, man. You I, like I said, you got to stay consistent. I don't really know where to draw the line. I think all penalties are pretty acceptable. I mean, like I said, the one joke accepted was pretty much the worst. The no huddle, my my computer player bump into his offensive line, is probably the worst one you can get, honestly. But that's enough of that. That's enough of the Pavin versus Clef. Obviously, Pavin went on to win the game, and he's in the groups we talked about earlier. Good luck to him in the tournament. We'll see how the Madden Karma fights back. As we saw, Kiv declined the penalty, and he's had a lot of success since then. You know, Pavin accepted the penalty. We'll see how it goes for him down the line, you know. But the next thing I want to get into is the Madden drama videos, man. We've seen Yo Mama tells Madden drama, and now we're seeing um, GPH. All you guys know GPH doing a lot of Madden drama videos. And I just, this is how I feel about these videos. You know, one, they're done by people that kind of aren't in our circle. They they aren't. I'll tell you that right now. Even your mama at some point is kind of, your mama's like, I think your mom is a super clown. I will tell you that right now. I think he's a super, super, super clown. Because one minute he's your best friend. W, let's go out to the bar. Let's go to the club. W, let's hop on this see with this. Let's make a song. Blah, say, blah. You didn't blah, say, Let's make a needy gaming song. Blah, say, blah. And then, I mean, then the next week he putting out posts about me and Skimbo still being racist. And he said the needed gaming logo is just a skinhead logo with, with little change. Why would y'all support this? Literally made that post a couple weeks ago. I think he is a person that will do anything for attention and just piggybacks off our names to get attention. And I don't like giving him any attention, honestly. But I don't think he's doing the man drama videos anymore. I think GPH, who I think is a pretty decent kid, he's a little bit over the top. He's um kind of in that same avenue. You know what I mean? He's kind of in that same but I don't want him to become a super clown about this type of thing. Because ultimately, I feel like me, I can talk shit about any one of you guys. Because one, I'm a part of y'all, y'all all my friends, and I know what's going on amongst all. I know every situation there is. I've been in all these situations. I've been at the highest point of man. I've been, all this stuff. So I can talk any shit I want. Any man drama video I want, I can do. But these guys that are kind of outside of the circle, that are just, like, casting stones and pointing judgment for views on the Madden competitive scene, I don't like it. You know, and I don't want it to become a, a, a clown show that it's always been with your mama. And I, I don't think GPH is there yet, but he's flirting with it, to be honest with you. And uh, I think there's an, an avenue of players like GPH who are pretty decent man players. Like, not they're not great, obviously. Could probably qualify for, like, the Draft Champions Tournament. Could probably crack the top 100 weekend league. You know, like, halfway decent man players. 
Like, not your average. The Bazooka Joe is pretty much what I'm saying. Like, guys that play Madden a lot, you know, they're better than everybody on their block. They're better than everybody in their high school, but they're not good, man. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like those are the ones that hate the man, the competitive scene the most. You know, those are the ones that, that wish they were, like, good at Madden, and they wish they could be the best Madden players, but, they, but they're not there. And because of that, they hate the competitive community. I think there's a niche for that type of person. You know what I mean? And I think those are the people that, like, these Madden drama shows kind of, like, appeal to. You know what I mean? Like, the, the, the halfway decent, ha- like, the, the solid Madden player that wants to be great but just isn't there yet. You know? Uh, and it's pretty much... It's pretty much, uh, I think that's what the Man Drama Show is for, that type of person. And I feel like there's there's more of that type of person that is halfway decent in Madden than there are elite Madden players like, like us, you know what I mean? And I think the Man Drama Show is kind of for them. And, uh, I mean, it, it's been good. I think GPH does a, a good job. He's, he's an entertaining kid, and he does a good job. But I just don't want it to become a clown show where he just starts fabricating a lot of stuff like your mama would do. And that that's where it's like, all right, buddy, like let's not let's not go too far. Let's not get out of hand with this. Let's keep it, you know, keep it real. You know what I mean? And like I feel like he you know, and, and honestly, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I don't have a problem with pretty much anything he really said. I mean, one of the things about he talked about his latest Madden drama video. You guys can check that out. GPA Gaming Powerhouse. This is YouTube. I don't know if you guys know. You guys should know who GPH is. But anyway, latest video he talked about Kiv getting game film on somebody else while he was bitching about his game film being out. I mean, I don't think. I mean, I don't think that's a hypocritical thing. I think just because like. <laughs> Just because I don't want my game film being out doesn't mean I can't go ask for somebody else's game film, right? Like, like, what's wrong with that? Of course I don't want my shit going out. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I want to find everybody else's shit, right? I, I mean, I don't understand why. Where, where, what's the problem with that. I feel like every man player in the world at this level is going to be trying to find every ounce of information that they can. And if you don't use every ounce of... It doesn't matter. Any field in life, that everything in, you do in life, every field that you have, man, if you're not trying to access as much information as you can, you're just letting yourself down. There's so much information out on everything that we do, man, between the internet, between YouTube, between Wikipedia, whatever it may be. There's so much information in between your friends knowing stuff, between, you know, elders knowing stuff. There's so much information that you have. If you're not accessing as much information or if you're denying information that people are trying to give you or anything that's available to you, you're just doing yourself a disservice, man. There's so many opportunities to learn more about everything in life. And if you're not using these advantages that you have to gain more information, you're really just letting yourself down, you know, honestly. And I mean, and... To me, I I feel no shame. I have no shame for somebody trying to learn more about something that can help them in life. Whether it be because learning more about how my opponent plays Madden is like that's going to help me advance in the tournament. That's going to help me become a better Madden player. You know, and I have no problem for someone. Even and Kiv said that some guy just gave him the film because honestly, and I and I'll go back to the same group of YouTube type people that are halfway decent in man but not good enough to compete. They kind of want to be in the competitive realm, you know. So if, if if I'm a YouTuber and I'm pretty good at man, oh shit, I have something that can help Kim. I'm gonna hit Kim up because I want to be Kim's friend. You know, I want to do something good for Kim because he's the man, and maybe that'll get me my little end to get in the competitive. So I'm I'm more than certain people would hit, excuse me, people would hit Kim up to send him things, you know, because they would they want him in the competitive. They want to be in that competitive realm. They want to be friends with somebody that's that elite. It goes back to that. So, but like I said, if you're not trying to access every bit of information, you're doing yourself a disservice. And I, I think just because even if Kim was out looking for the tape, like, which which I would do all the time. I mean, I remember the Man Classic when I played online. Every game I, I had to play, I remember I had to play Short Texas Goon. I hit up AKG because he just just lost him. AKG, what's up, man? Can you you got past broadcast? Do you have the game? Oh, he streamed it on his channel. Okay, thank you, AKG. Let me go check out Short Texas Goon Twitch. Oh, damn! I just watched that game. Okay, next game. Who do I got playing next? Oh, I got to play franchise. I forget. Oh, let me go check out this game and ask anybody you can. I don't see what is wrong with that. 
I don't see how you can point and say that. Like, and at the same time, I don't want none of my shit getting out. I'm deleting my past broadcast. I'm making sure nobody recorded it. Please don't record this shit. Delete the No, my past broadcast is for nobody. I'm going to do my best job to hide my shit because that's my job as a competitor. I have to do the best thing I can do to hide everything that I'm doing. 1,000%. That's my job. So I see nothing wrong with, even if kid went hunting for stuff, I don't understand what, my, like I said last week on, on the show, I mean, my biggest thing with the kid and Mo on him, is just how they just demean how somebody's trying to grind YouTube. That's corny to me because <clears throat> that's the only problem I had with their whole interaction. Really, I really did. And I told you guys, if I played off stream, I would ask somebody, but that's just me. Nobody else. But other than that, I have no problem with anything that went on. Whew. We should have a segment where we don't talk about young kids. It's getting, it's getting obnoxious. It really is. Like I said, especially somebody that really hasn't done shit. But anyway, that's pretty much how I feel about them shows, man. Uh, when your mama did it, it was a clown show. It was because he's a clown, period. Just a man that wants any type of attention for anything that he does, period. And I don't want GPH to go down that road. Because I think he's better than that. He's uh, more entertaining. He is more creative. And <clears throat> there's more things to talk about, man. I find things to talk about, man, every single week. Even when there's nothing to talk about, I find things to talk about. But the last thing I want to get to, man, is the Eagles Nation thing. That was a big deal for me. And I kind of thought a lot different than most of you guys thought. And I'm going to look at the chat a lot right now because this was something that was kind of important to me. And kind of... I. <sighs> I want you guys to relax because a lot of y'all, a lot of people want to talk about Eagles Nation. Eagles Nation, for those of those of you who don't know that are in the chat, that are in YouTube, whatever it may be, who's ever in that doesn't know Eagles Nation, Eagles Nation is 19 years old. Uh, I first want to say I, I ran the Eagles Nation, I want to say man 16 when he was a chubby little 15 year old. <clears throat> God, my throat hurt. A lot of talking. But, uh, Yeah, so I first ran the Eagles Nation, probably met in 16. He was a little chubby 15-year-old or whatever. And um, I remember in the Madden, in the in the Mutt world, everybody scammed somebody. Like, that's pretty much, I think, the Eagle, but Eagles Nation anyway. So he was a kid streaming, trying to play Mutt, trying to get into the Mutt community. He's a little bit weird. You know, he would wager here and there and so on and so forth. And uh, essentially, for in the past four years, from Man 16 to Man 19, he did a lot of welching, burning people on wagers, burning people on money games, even to this day, like, not paying up when he loses and so on and so forth. And he also threw a lot, around a lot of racial stuff, a lot of racial N-words and all this stuff that was terrible. I didn't know about any of this, but I've heard from a lot of people that I respect and a lot of people that I trust that this happened. Cool. So, first of all, I want to... There are two different subjects. There's the burning subject and there's the racial subject. First, let me talk about the burning thing. This is how I feel about... Because I, I really think they're two... First of all, they're two scumbag things. But I think they're two different things to begin with. And one, before I start any of this conversation... Never in my once will I ever stick up for the, for any of these actions. Never do I condone any of these actions. Never do I just ignore any of these actions. They are terrible, both of them, equally terrible. All right? Period. I will start that before I start any of what I'm going to say because I don't want you guys to ever confuse that from me, that all this stuff is bad. But let me separate. I, I, I want to talk about the burning thing first because I want to get, get you guys how I feel about when people burn people. Because, I mean, between Ish, Juan, and I guess the Eagle Nation, we all know people that burn in Twitch, burn in the man community, wherever it may be. And I feel like once you burn somebody, whether it's for $5 or $20 or $2,000, you become labeled somebody that burns, somebody that welches, right? And that label never leaves you. Like, for, for the rest of your life, you're always going to remember that person. Now, Chad, you can tell me if I'm wrong, like, you really, like, you remember that person burnt somebody, right? Quick reads, bang. You remember that. 
I feel like burning somebody. For me in my life, this is how I feel. This is how I feel. I feel like if I'm going to go bet somebody online, right? I'll bet you 20. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Bazooka Larry in the chat, right? I will bet you $20. I will say let's bet $20 on something. Now, if I win and you don't pay me, I mean, I really can't be that mad because I don't know who the hell you are. I mean, you, it is what it is. I got When I go into the original bet with somebody, a random Bazooka Larry name that nobody has seen, if I go into that bet, I risk myself losing that money because I don't know who that person is. He might not pay me. He might pay me. Who knows? I feel like online and Twitch, man, in the man community, people have credit. You know what I mean? You know, I know who I can bet with. And me, myself, I pretty much only bet with people that I, I've met in real life. But I know the people I can bet with. You know what? If I decide to bet with this random name and he doesn't pay me, God bless him. Now his credit is shot. Right? There's people in the man community. You guys know their credit is shot. Eagles Nation, as soon as I hear this guy burn this guy, his credit is shot. So for me, if you choose to gamble with this person again and they burn you again, it's kind of a fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me situation. That's how I feel about burning. I think it's the scummiest thing. All the man, all a man really has in his world is his word. And if your word isn't worth shit, what type of man are you? I will tell you that right now. That's how I feel about burning. But, I mean, it's not, for me, somebody that welches somebody, it's not like a, a, a crucifiable act. It's not a crucifiable thing because I feel like, I mean, part of it is the person that's gambling with the thing. That's how I feel about gambling and as far as people that are owing people money. I mean, that's it. But that's just how I feel about the burning thing, you know, and, and, and Being sick and trying to do this is rough, but um, now we can. But now we can get into the racial thing, and you guys know me. I dealt with this immensely. It is the reason I just have my own esports. It's the reason I have no real sponsors. It's the reason I have no real esports organization. It's the reason why I'm by myself. It's the reason why I'm just standing on my own name, because when I won and I was the most marketable person that has personality that has you know intangibles that is good at man i was everything two years ago and it came out that i was racist and i said a bunch of n-words and everything no matter what the context is and this is people because you guys know me and a lot of you guys knew me before this at, at some point the context for the rest of the world the context doesn't matter you know it it does for you guys because you know me and it, it does for Eagles Nation because obviously I'm assuming you guys told me his was much worse. And it matters because you know the situations. But for me, obviously, the 500 people that knew me through Twitch and Madden, obviously they knew who I was. So they, they oh, no, he can't. But out of 500 people that knew who I was, what percentage is that compared to the people that actually saw what I said? You really got to think about that. You know, and really context didn't matter for me because – it's pretty much just about the words that you said. And, and the way people attack me and people still attack me today, not knowing who I was, not knowing where my heart is, not knowing anything about me, nothing about me. The way people continue to attack me, to like I said, to this day, is was devastating on my entire man career. It's devastating on my whole life. It's devastating on every accomplishment I ever had in bed. Because some people, that's all they care about. Now, Eagles Nation obviously is a child and i don't know when he did this racial stuff i don't know when it happened never excusable even from the stuff i did was never excusable and one thing you can never tell anybody how to feel about it so if someone is offended to the point where if someone's offended to the point where they don't want to deal with eagles nation no more they don't want to hear nothing about them that's fully acceptable that's fully fine and if someone never wants to talk to me and someone never wants to deal with me, somebody never wants to do any business with me and I'm detrimental to their success, I have to accept that as a man for the rest of my life. I cannot tell people how to feel. If they're that offended about it, then God bless. I, I have no problem with that. But the one thing about Eagles Nation to me, I think he's a little off. You know, I feel like he's he's 19 like I said, when he started this, he was a chubby little 15, 16-year-old kid. <clears throat> I think he's, like, super sheltered. I think he grows up in, like, some rural farm area somewhere. 
I think I think he's like borderline autistic. I'm I'm serious about that. And um I think when you see somebody act like this, somebody don't pay his bet, somebody throw around racial slurs crazy, I feel like he has no guidance, he has no role models, he has no adults in his life to tell him how to live. That's how I feel about him. You know, and and he has nobody to tell him how to act after that situation. Because once you do, sometimes people do shit out of anger. Some people do stuff out of, you know, just being dumb. You know, that happens. And I didn't have anybody to tell me how to act. And I know this kid doesn't have anybody to tell me how to act. For real? You know what I'm saying? And, and no, I'm serious. Because honestly, my girl worked with, like, autism and stuff. And, like, just because <laughs> you can be, like, partially autistic. You know what I mean? Like, just a little weird. Just a little off, seriously. Like social, like socially awkward. Like doesn't know no better. Like, do you ever see like like life when can't get right? Like he's like the can't get right of men. Like he's a little slow, you know. And, and to me, I feel like so. What I get from Eagles Nation is that he doesn't have a support system around him. He doesn't have the guidance. He doesn't have a role model. Honestly, I feel like he doesn't really interact with people in real life. If you make sense, like. You know what I mean? Because these are things that you learn in real life, you know, early in <laughs> early in your life. Like, you can't say this racial stuff. You can't not pay people. These are things, honestly, Chet, as much as they say, these are things you learn in, like, middle school, in high school. Seriously. Like, uh, am, I, am I wrong? Am I right? These are things that you learn early in your life. And I feel like these are things he didn't learn. So I feel like, okay, this guy's made tons of mistakes. And I have reached out to him, like, Yo, dude, you have to apologize for all this. And my biggest... My biggest complaint in all this is 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 this is what it was. This was my biggest complaint was kind of how we all treated this kid in the chat and and pretty much when he was as happy as he could ever be because obviously all he wanted to do was play man. I we all know he's really not that good at man. Like he's you know, he's never going to like win a belt or nothing like that, but he has a lot of fun playing the game and at some point you got to remove I don't know. To me, it's like the way y'all were talking to him and the way y'all made us. Y'all, if if I was that person as happy as I could ever be, no matter what I did in my life, if I was that person and I would read that chat, I would be depressed as shit. That all these people I look up to just completely kill me and just continue to tell me I'm a fucking loser over and over and over and over. No matter what I did in my life, and I feel like at some point, like... I feel like Jacksonville made me think about shit like this, like how we treat people. Like, no matter how, you know what I mean? And, and I don't know if y'all were right. I don't know if I'm being like like Dr. Phyllish or like Ellen or something, but I feel like, you know, I feel like we can teach him how to become a man because obviously he has nobody in his life that's teaching him how to do the right thing. You know, and I feel like if that's just a job for myself, that's cool. I'll help him as best as I can because he's made some serious mistakes, as I have in my life. And I feel like the way y'all were talking, the way y'all were trolling the shit out of him is just like, dude. Like, dude, this kid really deserved this. Like, seriously. Like, because I, because when I saw y'all talking in the chat, when I saw y'all talking in the chat to me, to the things y'all said in the chat, trolling the kid was the same shit that people continue to tell me to this day that don't know me from a can of paint and i'll be honest this kid probably called people racist he probably burned people but i know he didn't call 500 people racist in the words i know he didn't burn 500 people and i and honestly i don't know eagles nation from a can of paint and i know nobody in the chat knows eagles nation from a can of paint and it, this is the same type of shit that people were saying to me and the same type of shit that people say to me that makes me like, damn, why do I want to keep doing this? You know, and it's like the burn, like I said, the burning stuff and the racism, I think there's two separate things. But ultimately, this is what I see. This kid is, he's, he's goofy. Like he's, like I said, autistic is the word. Seriously. And like I said, like shut down some people he really don't know right from wrong. And I feel like the man shit is like his biggest like thing in his life. I don't know, it's just between Jacksonville and what happened with that cra- the crazy kid in Jacksonville, like it made me think about situations like this. Like how are we gonna treat people even if like they don't deserve to be treated? Obviously what he's did in his life, maybe he doesn't deserve to be treated the right way. 
but then does that mean we treat him like shit? Does that mean now, because of what you did in the past, do we have to treat you like shit? How should we treat people that we don't like? Pretty much is how what Jacksonville taught me. Like, how do we go about doing that? You know, do we got to – obviously, if y'all don't want to deal with him, he's racist. He did some wild shit when he was 17, so on and so forth. If y'all don't want to deal with that's cool and that's acceptable. And I understand that 1,000%. But to – but does that mean you have to treat him like shit, like he's always going to be a loser? That's my question, pretty much. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's really it's not a joke. Like it's not about the jokes, and I feel like a lot of the twitch, a lot of the twitch chat is a lot about who can say the best joke, and I felt like that's what it was when he was playing and stuff. And I, I maybe, I don't, maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm all the way around, but it's kind of how I, at, like, since Jacksonville, I'm pretty much like, okay, this kid is fucking crazy. You know what I mean? He's he's a little loose. He's a little, you know, he's he's not there. He's awkward. And the word to describe the kid is awkward, 1,000%. Uh, Chad, you would agree with me, right? So he's not all the way there. He made some super mistakes. That he should immensely apologize about. And I'm not even talking about the burning. The racist stuff is, is completely different from the burning. If y'all are getting burnt by Eagles Nation, at some point you kind of deserve to get burnt by Eagles Nation. I mean, I, and Joel, and, and you're right. If you say it once, you said it a million times. You're right. And I think every white person, has, I mean, we got to get over that. Like, every white person has had racial moments in their life. Like, and it doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean it's acceptable. It doesn't mean, and it doesn't mean that's a hateful person. You know, sometimes... You have to understand what arguing is about. Sometimes when somebody gets you mad, you know, and I don't, I, I guess he said this to uh, JRK, God, just relax. Big man streamer and whatever back in the day. I don't know where it was he's doing now. God bless him. Good kid. But um, ultimately, when you get, in, when someone makes you mad or you get in an argument, a lot of times you just think, what can I say fast to make him as mad as possible? You know? <laughs> No, so. Yeah, he definitely needs to uh, acknowledge why it's wrong. But honestly, who who maybe I'm just assuming that people in his life he doesn't have anybody in his life to tell him that it's wrong, you know, and that's that's something that's important. I feel like that's something important in everybody's life. I mean, you guys agree with that? It's important to have somebody in your life. That will tell you right or wrong. That can guide you and show you right and wrong. And like I said, this kid is awkward to the point where it looks like and it feels like he has nobody in his life that tells him what's right or wrong. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, how do we treat that person after that? You know what I mean? Is Does that mean we got to just, just troll the shit out of him? Or, you know, and, and if you feel like, damn, I don't want to deal with nobody like that, that's fine. But what type of person are you that now I have to berate this kid over and over and over because I don't like what he did or he did some racist stuff. Now it's my job to berate him and it's my job to call him a fucking loser over and over and over. Like what is that is that the the reaction to that? Is that the proper thing to do to somebody that wants to be in the man community real bad that and, you know, I don't know. I just feel like it's it's No no one gets a pass for anything. I don't get a pass for it. I, and, and, and as much as y'all know me, and all of y'all in the chat know me, all you guys have spent time with me, all of y'all spent, you know, conversations with me, everything. And y'all know me, and I will never get a pass for that my entire life. It is never a pass. You just have to step up, acknowledge, and, and you know, learn from it, you know. And, and, and are we going to be the community that just continues to call him a fucking loser or one that helps a kid learn from that and become a better person and change his life. That's pretty much my my take on the thing. How are we going to, we as the man community, how are we going to handle this slow, awkward kid being a stupid 17-year-old kid? How are we going to handle that? If you're If the move is berate him and bully the shit out of him and clown him and call him a loser, if that's the move, that's not my move. That will never be my move for anybody. I will clown the shit out of my friends. I will clown the shit out of my peers. But a kid that just is, is happy as hell to be making a running man tournament, I, that's not somebody I want to clown. You know, and, and if you don't want to deal with them, and if you don't want to deal with them, that's perfectly fine. 
what I'm saying? That's perfectly fine. Then just don't deal with it. You know, I, I think, like I said, I learned a lot from Jacksonville that how you treat people, man. I'm scared of every fucking person in the world. And I will tell you that wholeheartedly. And nobody should feel that way, but that's kind of how I feel. I'm scared of every person. And I'm scared of how I treat every person. And how, how can I treat people to make them affect the rest of their lives? Pretty much is how I see my life now, really. That's all. I don't know if he's, I just, it's not that he, he's slow. I don't know if he's slow. I just, he just seemed awkward. That's all, chat. And y'all could agree with me all the way. Now listen, I, I reached out to him and I talked about it and I said, listen, man, you got to take, and I told him I would write it for him. I, w- I would really help you out because this shit affected me immensely. And I was, I mean, that's all. Yeah. It, Yeah, but Joel, but what you have to realize is that, nah, Cap, I'm all the way, I will never, guns will never be a part of my life, kid. <laughs> but anyway, Joel, but what you got to understand is that it doesn't matter how you use it, man. It really doesn't, as much because you know who I am, and you know the context that I used it, and you understand it. But for somebody completely disconnected from the situation, it's the same thing. So I get treated the way y'all treat him. You have to understand, Joel, that, the way y'all treat him is the way the rest of the world that doesn't know me or doesn't know the kind, that's the way they treat me. That's the way they treated me for two years. You know what I'm saying? The way y'all, you dumb racist, bye bye. Nobody cares. Like, pretty much nobody cares. About everything I, if I put a tweet out, oh, nobody cares, you're a racist. Like, I still get that shit to this day. And that was the way y'all was treating him in the chat. And I know a lot of y'all don't really know that. None of y'all know. I don't know the kid. And if you do, God bless. And I feel like, like I said, this goes down to the line. Where you can't really tell anybody how to feel. And if you feel a way where I need to, you know, berate this kid and call him race all this, then third, and that's the way, I mean, that's how you feel. But for me, it's like, let's take a step back and see how can we really approach this? How can we really, you know, use our status as a man community and our status as something that this kid wants to be a part of to kind of change his outlook and teach him right from wrong, you know? Because personally, I feel like he don't know it. Not that that's an excuse. It's just a misfortunate for his his upbringing, his life, all that. I just think it's unfortunate, and obviously it's not none of our responsibility. But we could do something to kind of help it. I mean, I really, I don't know. That's all. I mean, it's, it's not about defending. I don't know why you don't... I don't know how y'all get me as defending. I feel it's like the word defending, there's been no defense. I I just feel like the question of the whole subject is how are we going to react now? You know, how are people going to react now after this kid then did this, that, and the third? How are we going to react? You know, how, what can we do to react? And I'm sorry, YouTube, uh, this is a little deep that this is, like, personable with me and the Twitch community, man. If you have your own opinions on this, you can please comment below. But I am reading the chat. If you ever want to check these these podcasts out live, they're Tuesday around 7 p.m. You can hit the notifications on my channel, twitch.tv slash dub dot. Legend, you're right about that. And I think that's one of the strengths of Madden is that people are so different. You know, everybody in the Madden community is different, you know, like. But ultimately, we all come together because we all love the same thing, man. And, and you're going to have some people that grew up in, you know, a, a, a tighter household, you know, that are more secluded. As I think this kid was very secluded. You know what I'm saying? He probably didn't see a black person until he was freaking came down to Madden tournaments. <laughs> Honestly, to me, and, and I feel like it's hard to see how, you know, hard to get a reaction and understand how the world's going to react to your behavior if you're not around the world, if that makes sense.
I mean, I'm, I'm, I just don't want y'all to. I don't want any of you guys confuse me with somebody that's justifying any of that. That's all I want, man. It's, <laughs> I just never want anybody confused with what I'm saying. I'm pretty much just saying, uh, how can we treat a person after that? You know what I mean? Because I know the way I was treated, and I know what it feels like. And uh, so def- and and at some point. And Mo has said this some of them, and some right, you kind of deserve it, you know, you kind of, but some of it's just not necessary, you know, because trust me, man, I know everything I do that was wrong, I, I, I know right from wrong, and at the time, I didn't even, I didn't know right from wrong at the time, I had no idea how big a deal it was, because, and Joel, I'll tell you, and this is something, I'm like, at the time, when it first came out, my dirt was the same thought process you guys had. Oh, everybody know. Everybody gonna understand the context. They know me. They follow me on Twitch. They know me. They could never think I'm racist. That's the first thing I thought. I thought it was just a couple little haters in the world. That's the. I said. I said what? Everybody knows me. I'm dub that w. Everybody knows me. I was just playing. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows you, man. Nobody. Not a single single person. You know. <laughs> I just um, to me it's pretty much uh, how can we you know not because to me it was tough for me when I when I accomplished something great in my life and honestly for him making this little tournament run is probably equivalent to me winning a tournament or something like that. Like this is the most attention he's ever gotten from Madden. You know what I mean? He feels like from playing all Madden for this many years, being that far in that tournament and having that many people in his tour- in his stream is pretty much the biggest thing he's done, right? And to have all them people just berating you probably I mean it probably got him feeling like feeling like shit, honestly. And uh, I just want to say, how what is the best way to handle this situation? And honestly, I feel like y'all that's really offended, really, I think the best thing, I don't know. Like, it goes to the thing, I don't know, you can't tell people how to feel, but I think just ignoring the kid and not paying him no attention, you know, because I really just, I, I really just, yeah. Yeah, people will, uh, people will definitely, um, the one thing about people, and it's not the man community, it's people in general, they will always try to bring you down, man. And you guys will realize this. The the more success you have in your life, the more people will try to bring you down. And it's that bring you down type of mentality that I hate. And I, I think it happens in everything, you know. It's kind of almost, it kind of almost ties into the, the gaming powerhouse trying to bring down Kiv, trying to bring down the competitive gaming community. You know, because the competitive game, like let's, you know, and I always think people have that attitude to, well, yo, I'm not going to acknowledge that because the YouTube will not see that comment. But anyway, no, I feel like, I feel like the more you do in life, the more people will try to bring you down. And I feel like as a man community, I don't think we need to be the people that needs to always bring somebody down. Because I think we can be better than that. I know I can be better than that. And that's what happened. That's exactly what happened to me. And uh, you, everybody has something they can bring. Like when when anybody wins a belt, there's something you can bring them down. Like the, everybody has a weakness. Everybody has you know a flaw that somebody can bring you down. Obviously, the racism is pretty much as, as the biggest flaw you can have as a human being right now, especially in this time of day. is is pretty much the biggest flaw. So, and I don't know. Yeah, I mean that. That's all. I mean, I just, I hope you guys one understand that I'm not justifying anything. I just feel like the way we could we could treat the kid a little bit better. Ultimately, the kid has to apologize and be accountable for everything that he's done. Now, I fully, I I fully will tell you this. The burning welching thing is completely to me. That's <laughs> that's y'all fault a little bit. 
Chat, agree with me or don't disagree with me. Half of that is y'all fault for betting with the kid. You know what I mean? I I see it like like this. Like I feel like this with the cat with with the chat is like I see the chat. A hundred people say he owe me money. Listen, if if he owe a hundred people money, ninety six of them that's y'all fault. That's how I feel about it. But as far as the racist thing is completely different, so that's why I kind of want to separate those two issues. Because I do feel like if he was just a burner like Ish, well, he wouldn't be getting killed the same way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm just, Jacksonville made me really conscientious of how I treat people and especially, you know, how I treat people in this man community, how I treat people online as well, because I am afraid of every person walking this earth, you know, and I want to, and the way I saw the chat just trolling the hell out of this kid when he was as happy as possible, I, I, to me, it just struck a nerve because I hate people that just try to bring somebody down when they're happy, you know. Regardless of how shit, uh, even if the kid, and I don't think anybody under 20 years old or something can really be labeled a shitty person. Even if you did bad stuff, you, then, and obviously he did pretty much some of the horrible, and, and some been been as horrible as possible at some point, and I, don't, I really just wasn't happy with the way our community kind of just was just trolling the hell out of him and stuff. That That's the one thing that I, I just didn't like it, you know, that's all. Because a lot of it to me was pretty much, it just felt like how people talk to me, that's all. But anyway, I see y'all, uh, the chat on jokes now. So I thought, ultimately, like I said, I just wanted you guys to make sure I know I'm not justifying anything the kid did. I just want us all to be conscious about how we treat people from here on out in the man community. Because, I mean, like I said, after Jacksonville, I am afraid of every person. And I'm afraid of all my actions I take towards every person and how they affect the rest of their life. And, and I hate the mentality that people have, that human nature is to bring somebody down when they're up, when they're high on their pedestal, you know, it's just crabs in a barrel mentality. That's pretty much what a lot of people have. And I don't want the Madden community to have that. I want better for the Madden community. And as a leader of the Madden community, I will do my part. I have reached out to the kid. I fully expect he will have an apology. He will be accountable for these actions. And I will do my part to hope to try to guide children because that's what you guys are. Most of you guys are children or kids or young adults. And to learn what right and wrong is, you know, and what you can do in social settings and what you can't do in social settings and, and how to act. You know, even if I change, even if I change this kid's life just a tad little bit and get him in the right direction, just, you know, five degrees in the right direction, that'd be better than nothing, man. It'd be better than killing him in the chat. And I feel like we can do better as a man community. But also, if you feel like, if you feel like, man, I don't want nothing to do with the kid. He's racist. Uh, w stupid. I mean, I agree with that wholeheartedly, too, man. Do your part. Man, you don't have to pay the kid any attention here on out, man. And that's very respectable. And like, once again, I'm not justifying anything the kid did is completely wrong. And it should be fully accountable by him. That's all I'm saying, man. But anyway, this was Needed Podcast episode 19. We did this for 19 weeks, chat. This is 19. So 52 divided by 19. I don't know the answer. But it's feeling like we're almost more than a quarter of a year done with podcasts, man. This has been, I've been really been accepting the, uh, all the support I've gotten from this podcast, man. It's been a lot of work. I also got to thank Nerd Street for giving me this venue. My man Griff and Dre in the back, they always do the little, they hit the little buttons and turn the switches and everything. They do all the fancy stuff. They do all these graphics, make it look real nice. So I definitely got to thank those, man. Next week will be 20. Next week will be episode 20. You might do something big for episode 20. I don't know what else we're going to talk about. But if you're in the YouTube section, man, please hit the like button. Comment on, man, uh, comment on Eagles Nation what you think about the situation. 
ultimately, like I said, I just want to be conscious of how we treat people in this community as a whole. That's all, man. We are not crabs in a barrel. We are better than that. We want to see everybody succeed. Ultimately, that's the measure of a man. How happy can it be for somebody else's success, man? That's the measure of your confidence. It's the measure of your self-worth, man, where you can be happy for somebody else. Not that I want y'all to be happy for the kid, but I just want y'all to be conscious of how y'all treating other people in your lives. I'm sorry to act like Dr. Phil, but this topic really... uh. This topic really spoke home for me because of my my past and because of Jacksonville. Two different things that happened to me that I see immensely in this situation. So that's why I wanted to talk about, man. So if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section. I thank you guys, chat, man. I love you guys, man. Without your support, we would have no podcast. But we do have a podcast today, and this was episode 19. Episode 20 is next week. So I appreciate you guys coming through and kicking it with me.